the number of us believing in ghost spirits and the supernatural is on the increase. People all over the UK are reporting unexplained visitors in their homes. It's like a, a black figure with long fingers. And the more we were frightened, the stronger it got. And that's when the mind then takes over. Luckily, there are three people who may be able to help. Chris Fleming, renowned medium. I see a child running through here. Is able to communicate and channel their messages and demands from beyond the grave. Allow me to understand more. Maybe I can help you. Ice cold right along my back as if someone just landed right on my back. Jane Harris, paranormal researcher, psychologist and historian. Digging into the history of a location to find out who these entities are and why they are here. Something in here is mocking us now. Oh, yeah. well. Get lost. And Barry Guy, paranormal investigator and technical expert. Never afraid to take the investigation to places others fear to enter. Someone spoke to me. Need to go back to hell. Chris, Jane and Barry are investigating homes across the UK using specialist paranormal equipment. Someone's just touched my leg. Oh, my God. Someone. To gather evidence, communicate with spirits, to find out what they want and help let them go. I just saw you. Who was that? Please talk to us. Doing whatever it takes to return homes back to the hands of the living. If you're not safe in your own home, where do you go? Coming up, in the team's toughest case to date, Jane gets messages from beyond. Apocalypse follow 13. Are you serious? Barry faces his worst fears. Zebra is not an easy demon to work with. It's a demon from hell. <laughs> And Chris discovers the investigation is in trouble. <laughs> the cross is gone. The cross is gone. You serious? Yes. What? It's right here, the cross. All right, team, we're really close to the next location. We're heading to Nuneaton. I'm looking forward to this one. Nuneaton in the Midlands. Uh, Nuneaton's famous for its um, mining community, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. Back it's, in the 18th and 17th The land century. here is, is coal. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's all built on coal. This all looks very normal, doesn't it? So far, it this, is, yeah. this is a regular street with... Regular houses. house, yeah. regular street. But despite its straightforward appearance, some of the strangest paranormal cases in recent years have been linked to seemingly ordinary people and places. Our team of experts have been called in to investigate reports of unsettling activity in a modern council house built on the site of an old coal mine. Since the first day of taking over the property nearly 20 years ago, Julie Evans has been plagued by escalating levels of terrifying and unexplainable phenomena. When we moved in, I went up into the back bedroom and there was like a big Pentecostal in nail varnish. Satanic verses written in nail varnish on the walls. There was like a ram's head with horns on another one. Me and my husband um, decided to clean it up. So the first day, um, we stayed overnight, and he was a postman at the time, and uh, I heard him run up the stairs, come in, open up the door, and I went, and I turned over and I went, what you forgot? And there was no one there. That was the first experience, day one. After identifying the spirit of a woman running up the stairs, sightings and sensations became frequent. We got quite used to living with her. And I, um, I just used to say, oh, morning, you know, I know you're here, don't scare me, and, and everything was OK. Until my daughter hit 12, puberty. Boy, did things change. Almost overnight, the energy in the house became much more sinister. 
could not keep a babysitter for love and money. My last babysitter, um, she was in the toilet. There's no toilet roll in there, so she's opened the door to go and get some toilet roll, and the toilet roll's on the landing, coming at her, unravelling itself. That was the end of that babysitter. There's something that's uh, that I believe is dark, and it's attached to my daughter. Jess could physically see and hear them. Things like were flying off the shelves and restacking themselves in the centre of the bedroom. Then the television kept coming on through the night. I even t started to turn it off at the plug and it still kept coming on. There was no picture, but it was like static and noise and you could see the light from the TV upstairs. And the more we were frightened, the stronger it got and the more th things happened. Your home is your sanctuary. You know, you come in, you shut the door, you put the chain on, you feel safe. Here's the opposite. You take the chain off and you unlock the door because, you know, you're frightened of being locked in here. If you're not safe in your own home, where do you go? Hoping to help Julie, the paranormal team are closing in on the location. It's interesting, there's thing popping in my head right now saying it's personal. Something that Spirit's telling me it's personal. Medium Chris insists he be kept completely in the dark about all aspects of the investigation. I don't like to receive any information before I go to a location. The reason being is I don't want to be swayed. It's like this, it's like that. It's, this is my opinion, this is what I saw, because it's all open to interpretation. I'm hoping that whatever is there is going to be open enough to communicate with us. Well, we're here. All right. <clears throat> this is interesting. Very normal house. And one thing I want to mention, too, is on the drive, I was getting a little girl in my head, where the little girl is someone that uh, lives in a home or lived in one time. we we'll have to figure out what that is, that connection. Interesting. OK. Well, guys, are you ready for this? Yes, let's yeah. do it. Well, listen, guys, I'm going to interview a couple of people that have been affected in this location and uh, find out what paranormal experiences they've had, the encounters and all of that stuff. What are you going to do? I need to meet a guy called Peter. He's a local historian and author. He knows everything there is to know about this area, particularly its history and the significance of this location. So maybe he can help us out. OK. OK, good. I guess we'll meet up in a little bit. Do you walk yeah. around? Thank you. All right, mate. See you later. See you. As Barry and Jane head off to discover more about what could link this seemingly unassuming house to the paranormal, I begin my investigation. Crossing the threshold, I immediately start sensing something dark. I can feel almost like a cloak just go over my body, a heaviness. And then I'm immediately getting something in the chest here. So that pressure means there's something has occurred here, not of a good vibration. While Chris starts trying to sense what might be lurking at the property, at a friend's house, I'm meeting up with Julie's daughter, Jess. Jess, what experiences have you had in the house since the time that you've lived there? It's been from the beginning, since we first moved in. I think I was about six years old. So it's a bit of a latch door key kid, if you will. Yeah. And as soon as I'd get to the front door and open it, it was like it was excited and my fear excited it and it like, run down the stairs at me like, almost like that, like waiting for me to get home. So I used to just lock myself <laughs> in the kitchen and I'd stay there till my mum got back. It's clear growing up in this property must have been terrifying. When I was in bed, it'd be like it was in my face. We'd hear it walking, it'd be moving things all the time. And it was just, you know, where else do you go but home? Back in the house, I'm still trying to pinpoint what I'm feeling. I'm looking at the backyard, getting something underground. So I'm getting this male presence once again. And he says, you'll find me underneath. You'll find me underground. We need to find out the history of this place. Like, what was it built on? Because I'm getting there's another history under this ground, something from the past. While Chris and Barry investigate what might be going on inside the house, I want to learn more about what may have happened under it. This area has a long history of mining, and I've discovered Julie's property was built on the site of a former colliery. I'm hoping local historian Peter Lee can tell me more. Yeah. So, 
We're in the miners' welfare park, so presumably mining played a very important role around here. Yes, absolutely. Um, Bedworth's built on coal. Complete area is a slab of coal, so that in the 19th century, uh, most of the men worked down the pit. They called it Black Bedworth. They've been mining coal here for nearly 400 years, but following the Industrial Revolution, production dramatically increased. And what were conditions like for the miners? Terrible. Uh, shocking conditions. So were there any significant mining disasters in this area, Peter? Yes, there were lots of uh, mining disasters. It vir is a virtual monthly affair. Wow. After listening to Jess's shocking account of this dark presence, I ask her to describe what she's seen. So it's quite, it looks like quite a big man. So like broad shoulders, quite tall. One night I was in bed and my mum was in bed and it was walking that heavy footed up and down. And my mum went, Jess, get in bed. She thought it was me. Back in the house, as I go upstairs, I'm still trying to work out what's here. I do sense a male presence. I sense that outside but I need to know if there's more than just one spirit here. Make your presence known. As I've gone to get out of my bed, I've seen it in front of my door. Mm. And I didn't, I think it was just like a little rush of adrenaline and I ran through it, even though I was terrified. All I can say, it's like a, a black figure with long fingers. In Bedworth, a suburb of Nuneaton in the Midlands, the team have been called in to investigate powerful paranormal forces in a seemingly normal house. Although I'm struggling to make a solid connection, I'm sensing a lot of activity here. You're gonna have to communicate with us so we can help. I'm sensing this, this frustration, this anger. It's upset that something wasn't resolved for you. You haven't been able to move on, so you're frustrated. I'm beginning to feel there's a strong connection between these spirits and someone in this house. The people that reside here, is their emotions and feelings affecting you? Reminding you of stuff? The people that reside here, is their emotions and feelings affecting you? Reminding you of stuff? I heard you. Why can't you go? He wants me to leave. I understand. Historically, this area was dominated by mining, a dangerous and often deadly profession. I want to discover if there's any connections between past pit tragedies and the house we're investigating. So tell me more, Peter, about these terrible mining disasters. Uh, well, there was a major one at Exhall in 1915, uh, which um, killed 14 people. Yeah. Where is that in relation to where our property well, is located? Well, Exhall Colliery will be down here somewhere. Right. And then you've got another colliery up here, which is Charity Colliery. From what Peter is showing me, I can see that crisscrossing beneath this whole area lie miles of old tunnels, some of which tragically must have entombed the miners when they collapsed. Yeah. So how likely do you think it is or how feasible that there may have been a collapsed tunnel around this area? Very feasible. Tunnels collapse regularly um, because they use wooden props and the props rotted and the roof would fall in. Having lived in this property most of her life, Julie's daughter Jess has been affected by persistent paranormal activity. Do you think that this male spirit is attached to you? What's attached to me, I think, is different. I don't think it's linked to the house. It is, it is me, and I think that's followed me from a baby. All I can say, it's like a, a black figure with long fingers. How many times have you seen this male figure with the long fingers? Probably about 12, 13 times that I can remember. <sighs> Incredible. There's a huge amount going on in your home. A lot. You definitely need help. After walking around this property, I am seriously concerned. OK, here's the thing. People got to understand, this goes in with a lot of hauntings. There's, there's little entities. There's little bad little spirits, imps, little devils. But to remove that, you have to remove the source of the spirit, find out why it's here, 
also the family. Is there anything they're going through that could be attracting it as well? You work on both of those things, then you can remove the other entities. Otherwise, the source that's bringing them there will keep bringing them here. With a better understanding of the area's history and the spirits they will be facing, the team regroup. Hey, guys. Hi. Um, I did my walkthrough, yeah. okay? And I'm getting the sensation here that this is going to be a very difficult case, yeah, very about. complicated. I'm coming in contact with this male spirit, but then I'm seeing that there's other entities that are there prohibiting it from letting us know what's going on. Hi, guys. Hi. 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 Nice to Hi. see you. Hi. I know you are. <laughs> the next step is meeting the concerned residents and beginning the investigation. So I don't think we waste any time. So if you're happy to join us initially, we'd like to crack on and see if we can communicate with whoever, whatever is here. Oh, well, it's there waiting. It's really? already it's there. there. Wow. And they don't like you guys. Okay. Yeah. Let's go okay. in. Okay. As Julie and Jess have both had strong paranormal experiences here, we're going to let them lead the session and see if their questioning brings forth the spirits. So I'm going to be recording using digital voice recorder, and this is to capture any electronic voice phenomena or ghost voices. At the same time, this device here, yeah, which is a temp REM pod, will monitor any fluctuation in the ambient temperature of the environment. So if you're feeling cold or we get that sensation, this will tell us. But more importantly, if I turn it on and I move towards this device, the alarm will send off. OK, ladies, whoever feels ready to speak, ask your question. OK, so why me? Did you hear that? Someone upstairs. I heard the bang. Did you just hear that back? There I heard the bang. bang. Yeah. There was a bang. That's not me. No. No. And I'm yeah. goosing all over. There's no crew upstairs. No, no. You're goosing. Okay. So oh, it's yeah. two for Do yes, one for no. Are there imps here? Is there a demonic entity? that the imps serve that is coming and going from this house. Are there imps here? Is there a dem There's imps here. What exactly is an imp? Good question. Okay. Well, there's a variety of them. And what happens is, is if anybody does any conjuring, trying to communicate with things, they can sometimes come through, like a gateway. It'll start to affect people. Objects will disappear. Things might go flying across the room. You might have sudden bursts of anger or depression or being upset. All of the all above. The yeah, all, all of, of the above. above. You just hear yeah, the boom? Yeah, yeah. We just heard another boom yeah. come from upstairs. Mm -hmm. Then what happens is they will stake the place out, and then a major demon will come in. We've had a few responses, but as the focus of the activity seems to be upstairs, we relocate. Using a spirit box to sweep frequencies, hopefully we'll hear responses from whatever is haunting this property and Jess. Why are you here? Why are you after me? Do you want Chris to help you move on? Yes. Yes. That was a definite yes. Why are you hiding from us? Do you feel Do you that? Yes, yes, yes. Oh, the yeah. whole floor just went like this. Yeah. Like an earthquake. Let me ask you a question, you both of you. When you moved in, you mentioned that there were some markings. Where were they? They were on all of... There was something on every one of the walls. Where? Which room? This room. This room? This room. This, yeah, there was, like, a big um, Pentecostal-type thing on that one. Um, various, like, satanic slogans and drug-related slogans, all done in nail varnish. Did you get rid of them? And I tried to get it off and I couldn't get it off, so I just painted over it. On, on these walls? All of these walls, so I just painted over it. So these drawings are all still here? Underneath, yeah. Any chance we can just wipe clean a section of this wall? If you must, yeah. OK. I think careful. we've got a long night ahead of yeah. us. We've got a job to do. We've got some pointers, we've got some ideas. I think we need to be very careful. From what we've already learnt about the house, I've got a good idea where to set up the cameras. 
Now it's just a matter of getting everything in place before we begin our investigation. As Julie and Jess leave, the property is locked down. And the team gather in the nerve center. Now this is the typical two bedroom semi detached property and we have six cameras located across the entire building. Starting on the ground floor, we have a camera in the kitchen, and this is where we carried out our trigger session with them both. Moving on into the living room, there's another fixed IR camera, and this is pointing directly at the TV screen, but you can also see the door and the entrance to the room. Moving up to the first floor, we have a camera located in the upstairs hallway. You can see the entire property from up there. The next camera is located in bedroom one, and we also have a camera in the bedroom two. The final camera is located in the bathroom area looking down the hallway, so we'll be able to see if there are any shadows passing down the stairwell and also coming out of each and every bedroom. Good. We've got a complex case ahead of us. Absolutely. Come on, guys, let's go. For the next 12 hours, it's just us and whatever dark entities haunt this house. In an unassuming council house in Bedworth, a suburb of the mining town Nuneaton, the team are prepping the kit for their all-night investigation. So I've placed the temp REM pod device on the table. Um, if we hear this go off, it can only mean that something's interacting with it, something is drawn closer and trying to manipulate the electromagnetic field that it's already got created there. So the ambient temperature in the room is about 20.4 degrees. I move towards the aerial of the device, the alarm sounds and the LED flashes. There we go. But appearances can be very deceiving. It might be small, but everything we've heard about this house points towards serious demonic activity. While Chris reviews the data from his initial walkthrough, Jane and I cautiously enter the property. Are there any spirits in this house Human spirits, please show yourself on this camera so we can see you. I know from Jess the stairs are a route commonly used by spirits, so I'm hoping the SLS camera will register some activity. If there are any spirits here, any ghosts, please come and stand in front of us. Let us see you. Minutes in, and we're already detecting a presence. Jane? I've got someone, and it keeps coming in out. There you go. Can you see that? Yeah. yeah. Take a photograph. Can you walk towards us, please? It's actually raising its arm and pointing, point to where you want us to go. Oh, I've lost it. Where was it? Who's downstairs? It's me. Did anyone move and knock something over? Chris, was that you? No. I'm just where, taking pictures of the... Where did that noise come from? Uh, behind me. I do not like this house. Nothing in... No, I always said nothing in here. Um, we... <gasps> we... The cross is gone. <laughs> right here. <laughs> you serious? Yes. What? It's right here, the cross. We'd all heard something. Was this the sound of the cross detaching itself from the wall and falling on the stairs? The cross is right here. I didn't even see it on the floor. Do we have this on camera at all? Is there a camera? Film that cross on the floor. Film this. On the floor there, It's right here. We're all a little antsy right now just because this just happened. Um, but demonic entities will do that as a form of intimidation, OK? Trying to regain authority because we walked out and are going, OK, we know what we're dealing with now. We're going to confront this. So it's just a sign of intimidation, which I got to admit, it's got some of us on edge. It's a potential start to our investigation. Until we know what we're dealing with, we need to be on our guard. 
Hey, this is EVP recording in the kitchen while Barry is in one bedroom and Chris is in another. Was that you, Jane? Oh, this one's going. And this one. up there. And this one. They both went off at the same time. The activity here is intense and relentless. Holy hell. Speak your name. Tell me who you serve. Are you attracted by this? The force of energy. And that you can manipulate this if you choose to. <sighs> Try to identify yourself. Are you a human spirit? While Jane continues her questioning in the kitchen, above her in the bedroom, I want to try and identify what is causing so much disturbance. So what I'm going to do is just pay attention to any changes that's in the room. What are you? I demand that you speak the truth on this device. You hear that? Yeah. What was that? Right when the thing goes off, it says imp. Listen to this. You hear it? Imp? Right when it goes plus. Imp. Oh my god. Yes. Clear as day. I don't know if that was just a blur on my eye. I could have swore. I just saw something in this room. That has just confirmed it. I saw something about this height, so not quite to the top, about to there. Shoot across. I've just seen something in the kitchen about two and a half feet tall. Really? A dark shadow which zipped past the unit, past Adrian, and then the uh, meter went off. Holy cow. We got what we needed. This confirms it. We've already had multiple EVPs telling us there are imps here, but this is really unusual. They're almost brazen in their behavior. Continuing our investigation, I want to focus our attention on the back bedroom, the site of our powerful spirit trigger session earlier. Hey, you guys. Yeah. Julie said that around 11 p.m., things start to kick off in this house. That's when things start coming through the walls, noises, that kind of stuff. And it's now 5 to 11. Yeah. Remember, guys, this is the room where there are the symbols on all of the walls. Uh, so Sorry. Julie felt something like a pentagram on this wall. Yeah. She said there was a goat's head and other things here. So if there is a symbol on this wall which is directly connected to you, the entity I'm speaking to directly now, can you make your presence known, please? Oh, wow, we have collaborating evidence. It We've went got, to green as well. It went to green on here too, which is true, and it just did it again. Okay. You got this? It's going to true three times in a row on this. It seems something is demanding we recognize its presence. Are you a demon? Two for yes. Oh, holy. Look at that. And it's gone to green. Went to green on here, and it went two for yes on OK. There. So we know definitely what we're dealing with. I think we need more conclusive evidence, so I'm going to use the Ovilus 4. What it does is it detects any fluctuation electromagnetic field, and it's got a database of over 2,000, 3,000 words. So depending upon the fluctuation, it's going to select one of those words. The goal is to have an intelligence go through this and pick certain words to communicate. Chris, why don't you try placing that against the wall? You know where they had the markings? Yeah. Soon, apocalypse. Oh, my <gasps> God. What? What? 
What? Look at the REM pod. Apocalypse Follow 13. Are you serious? That's crazy. In all the years I've been using the Ovilus in investigations, I've never had such direct, clear responses. And it's still going. What is Oremus? O-R-E-M-U-S. Anybody know? Someone want to look that up um, on their phone? Would you like to know what Oremus is? What, yeah. what yes, does it please. Mean? Latin for let us pray. What? Oh, oh wow. I've gone cold. Wow. Armageddon, or was it an apocalypse? 13. Follow. Follow. It's an invitation to pray. An it's invitation to pray? Said before short prayers in the Roman Catholic Mass. <gasps> you are joking me. Who do you serve? Satan. Satan. Who is your master? <laughs> again, Did you hear that again. Twice, yeah. There are imps. In a suburb of Nuneaton, Warwickshire, we're eight hours into investigating the paranormal activity that's destroying the lives of the residents of this small property. Now that I know what we're dealing with, Back upstairs, I want to find out more. I want to make contact with this demonic entity. Don't channel it. No, I it just understand. I've done this before with them. I want to understand its state of mind of why it's here and what its purpose is. Because if I can understand that a little more, then I may be able to release it, to remove it. All right, I'm gonna close my eyes. Just wanna see if anything will start to align with me. I'm giving you permission to come into my space. Not into my body, into my space. What is it you wanna say? Stop! That was different. That was interesting. Barry? Yeah. Oh, Jesus, you're in the room? <laughs> I've got a lot to process, but it is becoming clear there are various entities, from the demon through to the imps to trapped human souls. I'm getting these souls below us. There are souls that are coming forward within one of the mine shafts, because I'm seeing this dark tunnel, yeah. and I'm seeing these people lining up. Are there souls in the mine shaft that want us to pray for them so they can leave that place to find peace? Speak now. Are there souls in the mine shaft that want us to pray for them so they can leave that place? Is that yes? Yes. Peace. Leave that place to find peace. Speak now. Yes. I know we can help them through prayer, but there are still details about the demon eluding me. So I listen back to the recording. Oh, wait a minute, that's crazy because it says two words. The second word is demon. And then the first word is saying like, semen, shemen, zeba, something. And then it says demon. It sounds like zeba, zeba, but. Oh my God. What? What does it sound like? Like, um, Seba, Zeba. Z E P A R? I don't know. What are you saying? Zeba. 
It says here, Zebra is not an easy demon to work with. For the, for the inexperienced, he has been known to cause some issues for occultists. <gasps> it's a demon from hell. The most important infernal duties are related to love, lust. <gasps> it is said that he is capable of seducing women by taking human form. Oh, my God. We have to remove the demon first. Correct. And his legions. Correct. Of imps before we can help the human souls that are trapped here. Correct. With a plan in place, Chris can begin his cleansing ritual. In the name of Jesus Christ, I forbid every spirit from any source from harming anyone in this home, nor following them anywhere. Pray. This demon, if your name is Zipar, you must leave. Heavenly Father, I ask forgiveness for this entire family, for all the lost souls that have been trapped in the mind. I ask that the angels, and with our own words, shut down any gateways, any portals that have been established here. Dealing with such a notable and challenging demon as Zipar, all my abilities are being tested. But I can't let him remain. For the sake of Julie and her daughter Jess, he must be exercised. It's over. it's over. Chris. Did you hear that? Said it's over. Said it's over. Good. We just came into the kitchen, and through this spirit box, Jane and I clearly heard, it's over. This has been one of the most intense investigations of my life. But hopefully we've made a real difference. As dawn breaks, it's time to tell Julie and her daughter Jess what we've discovered. Hiya. Hi. So how are you doing? How are you feeling after yesterday? Uh, because of like what we experienced before we left, I'm a a little bit apprehensive and a little bit scared as to just how bad things got. You know, and maybe I, I believe there's stuff here that even I don't know. Why won't you go? You're not wanted. There's no. There's nothing to be had here. We began our investigation upstairs. After you left us, we decided to concentrate on your room, Jess. And this is where it gets scary. For me, personally, it was one of the scariest experiences. So if you remember during the trigger session, I asked you if it would be possible to wash part of the wall off so we could reveal these ritualistic markings yeah, yeah. you were telling us about. Well, we didn't have to do that. Take a look at this. Oh my God. What? 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 So the ovalist suddenly said apocalypse. It said follow. It said 13. 13. Which, the, the number 13, there were 13 disciples at the Last Supper. Yeah. So often these small references yeah, are, are given. Yeah. So one of the words there was Oromus. Now, we'd never heard of that before. No. We quickly checked it, and it's Latin for let us pray. So again, it was interesting. We thought, OK, we've got these two elements at play yeah, that's here. That's a good thing, surely. Yes. Well, there was more. And this was again placed on the same four walls in your bedroom. Take a listen to these. I'd already determined there were multiple entities here, but this confirmed a presence of imps suggesting an even greater power controlling them. Who's in all over? Finally. Who do you serve? Satan. Satan. Who do you serve? Was Satan here? No. 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 Satan won't, won't worry about this, has bigger things to do. So we had enough evidence to go on that we weren't dealing with just human spirits. We were dealing with something demonic, not Satan himself, Correct. but a demon coming across and fooling us, misguiding us into believing this was the devil. I just didn't think it was that bad, not, like, demonic. With all of this information, Chris was very brave, actually, and attempted channeling. 
What I do is I start to go into a trance. I will do a trance chance where I will let the spirit come through and maintain control and I'll ask it questions. I'm just gonna play this for you. I start communicating with some of the spirits saying, show me some things we may be missing. And what I found was that there were two demons. I gotcha. Hear the voice say, you see? That's the demon going. It says again, see. It's trying to calm the demon down, saying, see, look. Now this demon is removed, OK? But there was only one left. And it gave us its name. We heard this. Zipa. Oh. Zipa. Demon. Now that is a demon's name. So, we looked it up. Zipa is the name of a high duke demon, a demon that commands 26 legions of powerful imps. And he's powerful demon. It's a, a duke demon. We're talking higher than the imps. Yeah, because I mean, we didn't think it would be, you know, we thought it would this all this was low level, but it's not. It's, this has now gone up. And, Absolutely. Hasn't it? So, there's two things that needed to be done. The first thing was we needed to remove these demons. One of them was removed during the channeling session with the assistance of the angels that came through. The second one was removed along with the imps doing the blessings. This is done to basically tell it that this now becomes blessed land, blessed home. The walls are no longer evil or gateways. They're being closed by the holy water. How do you feel out of interest at the moment now, having heard all of that? It was a lot of information, wasn't it, to take in? Halfway through, terrified. And then when I heard that say Satan, ter terrified. Uh, bit easier now. I want to say from a personal note that this has been one of the most, if not the most, intense and scary investigations for me, and I know for my teammates. Dealing with the demonic entity isn't easy but we did our job, and we are happy with the results. Just from the bottom of my heart, thank you. Thank you so much. You're welcome. This has been one of the toughest and most terrifying investigations. Good job, guys. Wow. That was brilliant. The most intense case ever. I've never experienced anything like that, ever. Well, I'm glad they called us, though. Yes. They did it. Infested with dark and demonic entities, no wonder this property was a living hell for Julie and Jess. But after battling these demons and blessing the property, hopefully a new era of peace and tranquility will transform this household. But who knows what our next case will bring?